<laughs> okay, hi, I'm Renee Hobbs, and welcome to tonight's class. This is EDC 534. Uh, that's a class called Digital Authorship. Uh, it is a Wednesday. Oh my God, it's March 27th already. And I am here with the amazing crew of EDC uh, 534. These folks are all getting the digital certificate in um, the graduate certificate in digital literacy. So I see on the call with us tonight, Kathleen, Pam, Lauren, and Michelle. That means there are at least six of you who are watching this after the fact and we're missing you. Yes, of course we are, but hey, uh, we're, we're, we're glad you're tuning in as well tonight. Uh, let me just uh, talk a little bit about what's up for tonight. Um, our topic is uh, remix, right? Our topic, is, our topic is remix. And what's going on here? I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it here. Oh, whoa. Not that one. Yes, here it is. Remix up at the top. And Cynthia is joining us. Hi, Cynthia. Okay, so um, here's what I thought we could start with. Highlights and lowlights of Leap 2 collaboration. An opportunity for reflection, because I think you survived your Leap 2 collaboration. What were your highlights and lowlights of this project? So oh, my highlight was getting to work with a rock star like Pam, because she is <laughs> so knowledgeable and i felt immediately when we met um and got together to, to brainstorm and to work that she had so many fantastic ideas and she i think i came in a little bit nervous about what i was going to be able to bring to the table um, i felt very you know very much a novice but she was so great and right from the beginning we were kind of just piggybacking off each other and brainstorming and um she put me right at ease and i thought she was amazing so that was that was a highlight for me thanks for sharing Highlights and lowlights of your Leap 2 collaboration. I know you had them. I worked with Cynthia, and um, I just felt like we lived create to learn in the whole process. So it was just amazing. I mean, um, talk about two different people. She's a high school math teacher, and I'm a, a college career counselor. And so just trying to understand two different roles and, and what happens in a day-to-day -day activity and then how you can come together and create something. Um, so we were all over the place. You know, I was like, well, we could have, you know, sort of like before Christ and after Christ, we could have before create to learn and after create to learn. And poor Cynthia is looking at me like, well, how does that fit into my algebra formulas? <laughs> But you figured something out. We figured something out and it was, you know, it worked. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of brainstorming. And I think it was, the high of it was really pooling each other's strengths. Mm, nicely put. We're doing highlights. Hi, Scott. We're doing highlights and lowlights of your Leap 2 collaboration. I'm just watching your Leap 2 uh, projects now and I'm trying to imagine what was the collaboration like and what were the highlights and lowlights? So we're doing a little shared group reflection. So we're sharing some highlights and we will be sharing some lowlights. What were your highlights and lowlights of your Leap 2 collaboration? Is my microphone on? Can you hide see anything? Okay. I was just gonna say, I was gonna um, add to uh, Kathleen. Um, we, it was nice that we actually lived to, close by, so we were able to actually get together. And I was glad that the, the date was pushed back a little bit. Uh, so we actually had three weekends we were able to get together for three days. So the first day was like, what? We were just talking and like, oh, we can't come up with anything, you know. But then we went home and we kind of like, you know, uh, like plan a little bit by ourselves, you know, during that week. And then the second time around, you know, we got some stuff together. Uh, and then the third, you know, it just uh, came together. So uh, it just took a little time and, uh, uh, you know, uh, effort. And, and I think it was a great experience. So uh, it's magical, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's a it beautiful, was. magical process when it works like that. Other highlights and lowlights of your, it wasn't all roses. I know. <laughs> I know. I um, 
I got kind of in my head about it being public and like something I would share and not that I really wanted to say anything controversial, but I just thought like, oh, like what are people going to think about these ideas? Do, well, am I gonna, am I going to stand behind these ideas if I share it very widely? And it just, um, I don't know. I just got in my head about it and maybe got in my way a little bit because of that. Anybody else had some of those feelings about some anxieties about sharing and about the publicness of it? Yeah, so you're not alone. Thanks for sharing. That's yeah, I think I could uh, piggyback on that because um, my idea from uh, early on was I was hoping that maybe we could make something targeted. You had talked about target audience and targeted for educators. And I've worked with educators a lot, um, uh, but I only worked in a classroom for like three years. So uh, what uh, my highlight was, was that um, Lauren brought that perspective, you know, in spades. She really just could talk the language and say what was relevant and wasn't. And, and, and that was just amazing. The downside uh, for me was just, getting to know the technology, learning the technology at the same time you're working on all those creative ideas and, and you know, programmatic stuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but um, we did it. <laughs> I, I think that's a really great point. Not only is there the creative process of the idea development, but then you also have the tool use and they happen together, which can absolutely be overwhelming. Thanks for raising that great point. Other highlights and lowlights of your Leap 2 collaboration? Um, I'll go. Um, so I worked with Brian and um, it took me a little while to get on board with what he was really trying to do. We had to kind of talk by phone and uh, kind of you know hash out what he was doing. And once I kind of got the idea, we kind of uh, talked about it and it kind of evolved over you know maybe three or four days. And uh, then it kind of really clicked. And I think we both really kind of, uh, you know, uh, we're on the same page with it after that. And um, as far as uh, low lights, like uh, Pam said, I used a POW tune. That was the first time I'd done that. And it was a lot more uh, labor intensive than I, than I realized. You know, it took a long time to do it. Uh, yeah. Something that, you know, now it's a tool I have. So I'm kind of glad I went through the process. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Um, okay, so I am really looking forward to uh, taking a look at your um, uh, Leap uh, uh, Twos. I have put them up, as you can see. Oh, I've got to, I have to show, I have to share my screen with you to show you that. Um, but basically, you can see those. Um, basically, here at the top, it says Leap Two Collaboration, and I just put uh, all, uh, there's five projects, there's 10 students. I put them all up in one place so you can see them all at once. Um, but it's really now time for us to talk about your LEAP 3 project. And so I'm just, it's coming up, it's due uh, pretty shortly. I think we moved that deadline forward to April 5th. So that's coming up. Do you guys have any questions or comments about your LEAP three digital storytelling project? I, I have a question. So the, the format, I know it's a podcast that we're doing. Um, and so that's a new, you know, technology that we're, or new literacy that we're working on. And with the story itself, I mean, can it, in terms of content, can it go in any direction? Like I have some ideas working on, um, I think that one of the directions, and I haven't looked at it again recently, but one of the directions that it, it says, it just says something about, you know, who you are as a storyteller, who you are as a person. So other than that, are there parameters on that story or can I just kind of take it and run? Yeah, so just to clarify, you can create a podcast, a video production, or a screencast. Okay. So you're not a force to do a podcast if you don't want. You can do a video production or a screencast, okay. right? And you're right about the content. There are some in ways in which the criteria invite you to make a, tell something a personal story. Um, it's an or original short story that helps an audience to understand who you are. And your story has to do something for the audience. Your story enables you, the storyteller, to learn from the story you tell by finding a deeper meaning to your own story. 
So that's, that's kind of a high bar, I think. <laughs> right. And um, then your story has to do something for the audience. Your story prompts the audience to reflect on their own experiences and look for larger truths about the nature of human experience. Wow. <laughs> you thought that last bar was high, right? Um, but as we have seen from looking at the examples, the smallest, tiniest little moments of story can do all those things, right? So, uh, yes, yeah, so, so this is a, 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 almost a very classic genre of digital storytelling, a la The Moth or Story Center. And um, you'll be surprised how even a tiny, tiny little story can be crafted into accomplishing these, these goals, right? So I'm glad you asked that question, Lauren, because that, that allows you to think a little bit about the story and the format. Other questions that you have about digital storytelling, Leap 3. Yeah, those examples right there, they're yeah. not from students, right? They're, I, I think I looked at them. They're not from students, from previous students. Oh, they are from do you, have, do you have any examples from previous to what previous students did? Absolutely. Um, I didn't see it over. Is it over there? I, I think it's empty. And my computer was empty. So oh. Here oh. are some students from okay. previous, previous students. Okay, perfect. Um, and uh, this one is my favorite. Let's just watch it now. I just love okay. this one. <laughs> oh my God, this is so great. I want to share a love story with you today about my mom and dad. But this isn't a typical love story because it's not about their love for each other, although they did love each other. But rather, okay, so we can already tell what format this is in, right? She's, she's done this like with, a, with Zoom. Zoom is a free service and see how she's put herself, or maybe it's a screencast. It's either a screencast or Zoom. So she's using a screencast here. She's made a series of PowerPoint slides and she's talking over them. Okay, let's watch. It's about an incident with Bang Bang Cake. My mother believed that each of her children needed to become comfortable in the kitchen, so she set about to teach us how to cook at a very young age. One of my earliest memories comes from when I was about five years old. My mother let me make my very first bang bang cake. We always made bang bang cake in the same eight inch square aluminum pan with the slide on cover. Now bang bang cake is different from most cakes in that it, it is mixed, baked, and served in the same pan. It is a moist, delicious chocolate cake and unique in that it doesn't use any eggs. It was the only kind of cake other than birthday cake that my mother ever frosted. To get started, the dry ingredients had to be gathered, flour, sugar, cocoa, baking soda, and salt. With a little help from my mom, the dry ingredients were measured into the baking pan and it was my job to mix them together thoroughly. Using a spoon, I worked diligently under my mother's watchful eye until the mixture was completely and perfectly combined. Three little hollows had to be made in the dry ingredients to keep the wet ingredients separate as they were added. And this was fun. It was a little like playing in the sandbox. Vinegar was measured into one hollow, vanilla extract into another, and cooking oil into the third. Then a cup of water was poured over the top of it all and once again, I set to mixing. With the greatest of care, I mixed and mixed to be sure to get all the dry ingredients in all the corners. Before baking, the cake had to be banged gently on the counter to remove the excess bubbles caused by the reaction of the baking soda and the vinegar. Bang, bang, bang. Now it was ready to be popped into the oven. The smell as it baked was heavenly. When the cake was done, it was set on a rack to cool. And then my mother let me frost it with chocolate frosting. How beautiful it looked in the pan and how proud I was of the job I had done. I slid the cover on the pan and waited for dinner. Finally, my father arrived home and settled himself in the living room to read the newspaper while my mother began fixing supper. 
I couldn't wait to show my father the bang bang cake I had made. So I asked my mother if I could carry it out to the living room for him to see. She agreed. I excitedly took the pan by the handle and went skipping out to the living room. As I approached my father, he looked up from his newspaper just in time to see the pan with my beautiful cake in it slide off the cover and land upside down at his feet. Cake and frosting went all over the carpet. I was devastated heartbroken by my ruined cake and fearful because of the mess I had made, I started to cry. But rather than be scolded for my carelessness, my father gathered me up onto his lap and comforted my broken heart and soothed my fears while my mother came in from the kitchen and cleaned up the mess. <laughs> I don't remember what transpired between then and when it was time for dinner, and I didn't know what became of my bang bang cake. But my mother had managed to fix up that cake and frosting, <laughs> and even though it looked like a battlefield, much to my joy, she served my bang bang cake for dessert that day. I have reflected on this event many times over the years and have grown in my appreciation for the loving response my parents showed me. Having raised four children of my own, I know how different my parents' response could have been to such a mishap. The love I received from my parents that day and on many future occasions gave me a secure foundation and the encouragement to create and to share. It gave me the willingness to take risks. Mistakes and failures come when we least expect it, but knowing we're loved and accepted gives us the confidence to pick ourselves up, keep going and try again. This is a life lesson I have had to come back to over and over again when life hasn't worked out as I expected and my best efforts have fallen short. I love my parents for giving me that gift and I still love making and eating bang bang cake. <laughs> That is a sweet, sweet story, right? So in my opinion, that rings all the bells of a digital story done with just the most char sweet charm and great insight. And in relation to our themes of our class about taking risks and failing and getting, you know, being creative. I mean, there's just, it's just so brilliant. All right. What other questions do you have about leap three? Okay, cool. Well then. Um, 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 tiny, tiny story. Uh, did I see five to six minutes somewhere? Yes, you, you are, you are definitely limited by time. Your time for this story. Expected length, five to six minutes, but it could be shorter. Okay. okay. Thank it could you. be shorter. Okay. Any other questions about leap Leap uh, three. Leap three. Just okay. a quick one. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Just a oh, quick one. Um, so if you're not if you're not good at narrating and telling stories, so mm -hmm. could it be um, not narrated? Could it be just um, images and like you know and soundtrack and stuff like that, or does it have to be spoken? Hmm. Does it have to be told? Because I'm horrible at uh, talking and narrating, and I'm horrible at telling stories. <laughs> That's my fear. I would do a horrible job at it. Hmm. I know that already. So you know, so could I do? Could we do like an animation uh, with just images and soundtrack and and maybe some some words popping up onto the screen or um, I don't know. I was just wondering. That's a really great question. And I think it's maybe possible to tell a uh, digital story non-verbally. I, th I think it might be harder, right? Um, but actually there's nothing in the assignment that says you have to use language. 
spoken word. It doesn't say you have to, uh, it doesn't say anywhere that you have to use spoken word, does it? I didn't see anything about that, so. Yeah, so I feel like if you feel like you can find a way to do that, do it. Why not? All right. Give it a try if that right. seems the right thing. The other alternative is write the story out and have someone voice over it for you. Oh, okay. All right. All right. That's another strategy is get a reader, right, to mm -hmm. read it aloud. And of course, uh, coincidentally, I'm going to show you a place where you might be able to find your read aloud. Um, okay. So one of the things that's been really cool watching you guys work this week is that um, you have been exploring open education resources and uh, in doing so uh, you got a chance to explore the live binders. Um, of course, I'm having a blast at the OER because this is a, another kind of remix, right? To um, discover um, resources that educators are sharing in all of the fields uh, from law, history, life science, mathematics, uh, all the different kinds of materials that we use to create, like syllabi and readings and lesson plans and diagrams and data sets, and case studies and activities and labs and lectures. So um, the OER Commons is incredibly interesting for uh, remix. And when I was poking around, uh, let's see, how did I do this? I just signed in, I typed in media literacy. I, I thought, okay, I want to see stuff at the college level. And what could that be? I found some really great, this was, it looks like it was an online course taught several years ago. But when I poked into it, I found some links to some really nice YouTube videos, right? This is a basically a online undergraduate course in media literacy and I can't believe how I found, I mean, I, I thought I knew everything, but I found some stuff that I had not seen before that was pretty darn good. So I was thrilled about getting a chance to think about Remix in the context of open educational resources. Um, but I also want to introduce you to another form of remix that I am intrigued with. And, uh, oh, and speaking of which, before I do that, I want to give you a remix uh, resource, of course. Uh, last week we talked about copyright, and you guys read the Copyright Clarity book. You are now completely competent to be a copyright um trainer to offer a workshop in your community and so this page takes you to a whole bunch of resources um for uh sl slides for um a model school copyright policy as a template for your school right so there's like lots of resources that are available to you to continue to explore um, the topic of copyright. I just wanted to make sure you guys saw that because we didn't look at it last week. But then here's what I want to do. I want to explore hit record. And so I'm going to, I'm going to lead you around hit record for a little bit. And then I'm going to give you a few minutes to explore it yourself. Um, but first let's learn about hit record by watching the orientation video. Let's see if I can play that big on YouTube. We'll recording. Watch it. So there's something I've been working on along with everyone here at the Hit Record office. Give me a thumbs up if you can actually see that video. Okay, let's watch it. It's five minutes long. For years, not exaggerating years, but we haven't uh, talked about it publicly yet until today. Today, finally. I get to tell you about it. Some of you out there know what hit record is, some of you don't. It's a deeply meaningful thing to me. When I first started with my brother many, many years ago, it was just a hobby. It was a prefab PHP message board we ran, and this little community started to form where people would make little videos and songs and stories and stuff together. And I don't mean that they just share the things they'd made on their own. Everyone was 
collaborate. In 2010, we launched it as a new kind of production company where anybody with the internet could come and collaborate on all kinds of art and media projects. Since then, we've made short films that played at Sundance, we published books, we put out records, we made a TV show that won an Emmy, we made stuff for tons of different partners from LG to the ACLU. And whenever any of those productions made money, we paid the contributors. Now, I'm incredibly proud of our community for everything we've done for years as a production company. But I've also been thinking for a while now about the limits of being a production company because there's only so many productions we can do at a time. And so there's only so many people who can be a part of each one. But what I really want is for Hip Record to be a place where anybody can come and have that experience of being creative and collaborating with other people. So in order to bring that experience to as many people as possible, Hip Record is going to evolve from a production company into a new collaborative media platform. So what's the difference between a production company and a platform? Well, as a production company, our focus was on me or people in this office starting projects and leading the community to collaboratively finish them. As a platform, our focus will be on empowering the community to start, lead, and finish their own projects. Sounds pretty cool, right? Well, today I'm here to announce that we have not built that platform yet, but we have taken a really big step towards getting there. I don't have a background in technology. Neither do either of my co-founders. Jared's a producer, Mark's a designer. But a few years ago, we started educating ourselves, meeting the right people, networking, studying, and learning what it would really take to build a platform like this. I didn't want to rush it. Like I said, Hit Record is my baby, and I wanted to get it right. Then last year, I started taking meetings with tech investors. We've never had investors before. We've never needed them. I paid for the company for the first few years, and then for the last five years, the company was cash flow positive. So it paid for itself. But we knew that to take this huge step, we needed both outside capital and guidance. This is why I wanted to partner with technology investors in Silicon Valley, not entertainment investors in Hollywood. I knew they would bring a perspective and experience that I just don't have. Now, raising venture capital is a hard thing to do for any company. The odds of success really slim but as it turns out things went well for us and i'm happy to announce that we have raised our first ever round of funding we raised 6.4 million dollars what and that is a testament to all of you because we were only able to raise that money because of what we as a community have managed to accomplish over the years. i wish there was a way to let you guys hear all the nice things that the investors said in those meetings so recently i actually recorded a conversation with our lead investor alex from javelin ventures if you're interested check that out i only wanted to accept investment money from people that i genuinely connected with i have spent a lot of time with alex now and i think he's a really good guy he really understands and appreciates who we are. And he doesn't want us to change into something that we're not. So the next obvious question is, okay, you raised all this money. What are you going to do with it? Well, the first thing to make clear is none of that money is cash in my pocket. None of it is extravagant bonuses for the staff or anything like that. We'll be using the money to build out the new tools, a new platform, to support our community, and to make it grow, and to bring as many people as possible the experience of creativity through collaboration. <laughs> to do that, we've started making some new hires, adding a few people to our creative, community, and social media teams, and we've really started expanding our products and tech teams, UI, UX, QA, front end, back end, web, mobile, DevOps, and more. Nice! So there are some big changes coming. We actually launched a new homepage today, and there's a lot of new features coming soon. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet, but they're a great first step in the right direction. I think you'll like them. Now, for those of you watching who have been a part of the Hit Record community for a long time, I know that growing can sometimes feel scary. Okay, all right, all right, all right. So you got the concept, right? Now you want to see it in action. So let me just share with you a little bit about... Um, Hit record and let's see if I can find where where my uh, where where my where my page is. Where is my page? All right. Well, here we go. Um, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour, and then I'm going to have you guys go explore for a little bit. Um, so when you get, you have to log in. You have to make an account, right? When you get when you come in, you're going to see um, basically uh, the this screen which is kind of announcing projects that you could cooperate on so this one's called think outside the box and take a picture based on maximalism it was 
Um, maximalism is defined as an aesthetic of excess and redundancy. So this is for photographers. So you basically think outside the box and take a picture based on maximalism. There's five more days left and you can see people who have contributed to this project, right? And here are the instructions. If you want some ideas to support this, right? Here's your, here's your instructions, right? So um, here's another one. Um, let's see some alarmingly good music made from this fire alarm. So the challenge is to take a, a piece of sound media, right? And make, a, um, and make a, let's see what it says here. All right, let's see what we got for email today. Uh, spam, 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 spam. Laura from Hit Record. What's this all about? Host of play along challenges for Montpellier. <laughs> Sounds like a blast. Let's take a look at the guidelines here. All right. Each week, guest curator selects a short sample beat, melody, or sound. Sample beat, melody, or sound. 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 <laughs> sound. <laughs> sound. <laughs> Okay, whoa. And here are the people who have contributed sounds. Okay, so there's some really cool sounds. One of the things that's really unique, create, create a mysterious scene by placing photos of real people, places, and things into an environment, right? So take an environment and put weird things into it. <laughs> and you can see some crazy stuff. One of the things that's really cool is that um, everything you upload to hit record you can remix, right? So, and everything everybody else post, puts up, you can also use. So, so there are records, which are the actual artifacts of what creative people in the community have posted. Photographs, drawings, animations. These are things people have put up to share, right? and you can use them in your own creative work. Or you could participate in challenges, like take a top-down photograph of your desk. Make a short video of you talking about what you think the future will look like in 50 years. Um, record yourself saying the word traditions in your native language. Whoa, that's cool. Let's hear. Tradition. Tra Traditions. Traditions. Traditionen. Traditionen. Tra uh, okay, that's cool. Submit hero villain profiles for yourself or others to use. Show me your best blood moon. Make a two minute video or less of your favorite toy, right? So you can post a challenge that other people can contribute to, right? Uh, and one that I thought was just absolutely cool. This one was really captured my imagination. I hope I can find it here. Um, where is it? It's just so adorable. Um, so, uh, World Book Day article. Anyway, so there's a lot of really interesting um, projects. I'm going to just go to the projects again because there was one about um, performance music voice vocals that I thought was just great. 
Oh yeah, uulate. <laughs> you guys know what uulating is? <laughs> uulate, right? Um, <laughs> it's just adorable. And um, this is where I was thinking, Cynthia, that you could put up your script and see if you can get a, um, you can get a, um, All right, uh, uh, an, uh, somebody to read aloud, right? So here's yeah. Hum a Simple Harmony. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So this, this, this website is absolutely addictive. And so now it's your turn. I'm going to give you six minutes to g establish a hit record account and poke around in six minutes. We're just gonna individually work for six minutes. And at the end of six minutes, we're gonna come back and go, what did you find? So I gave you kind of like a lay of the land, but really, you're only going to work for six minutes. So just like maybe want to take a look at one thing well, or maybe you're the kind, you might be a butterfly who flies from flower to flower. Ready? Give me a thumbs up if you know what we're doing. We're working on this hit record for six minutes. It's going to take you two minutes to log in. All right, we'll see you in six minutes. Have fun.
the tree. An old tree was standing still. It was a barren tree. As the morning turned to night and night turned into morning, winter turned to autumn and autumn to spring. Children were playing. Then all of a sudden, it was house and brought out his hands. We're moving forward with our Monster Kissing Booth project. We had a lot of contributions to the writing challenge. Thank you very much. It was so much fun reading them. And now I'm happy to say that we're going with Alexandros Jaeger's record, remixing my story that inspired by his record. I like the idea of the story not being as sweet as we think it is. Okay, you have one minute. We're going to be back, coming back right at 745. Okay, so you're almost back or you're coming back. So let's find out what, um, what did you see? What happened? What happened in the last six minutes? What did you, what happened to you? What did you see? What did you explore? What did you experience? I'll go. A um, couple of things I saw was the, the road trip one that, you know, I like taking road trips with my family when I was younger and I do that now with my own family. And uh, it's interesting to see other people's comments and their videos and uh, just be able to kind of transport you to different places and stuff like that. So that, that was one of the ones I kind of focused on. Cool. Thanks for sharing. I like the idea that there looked like there was a little bit of something for everyone. Um, and I found myself kind of drawn to the stuff, even though my kids are a little bit older, I kept looking at some of the parenting things and uh, um, the new moms uh, and new dads, what they're, you know, the funny stories they're sharing about their kids. And I just felt like that's such a nice place for people to get this shared sense of community when that can be kind of isolating when you're first, you know, bringing home a newborn and how you feel a little bit alone in your struggle. So that's a, it's a nice place to share ideas. Thanks for sharing. And this definitely gives you the feeling that this is a real community, right? 
Yeah. What else did you notice? I took a look at a lot of the different projects just to see the kinds of things that were out there that you could get involved with. So it was, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. It was amazing. Yeah. It turns out I went to the store and looked at how they sell creative things that are made from people's contributions, right? Everything from t-shirts to little like uh, notebooks and all kinds of things. What did you, what did you see when you were exploring? I looked at a video that um, was a collaborative project of pe uh, people adding to a song from 20 different countries who never met in person. And then um, some other people got together to create the visuals to go with the song. This is so, pretty cool. <laughs> so in a way, the hit record project sets us up really nicely for our theme next week, which is what is what is creative collaboration in context? And because, because truthfully, in my workplace, I don't get to creatively collaborate with my colleagues. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> that is just not the way it rolls. But I have creative colleagues in other parts of my life, right? And Hit Record is obviously an effort to create an online platform for creative people to collaborate. So we're going to really think in different ways about where creative collaboration occurs and, and how the institutional structures that we inhabit can shape the way we collaborate as digital authors. So that's kind of the uh, kind of bridge between uh, hit record and what we're going to be reading and talking about next week. So I want to um, do two things before I let you go. Uh, first, I want to um, give you a heads up on the final paper project, which I have now posted on the Pathright and on the um, and on the um, website as a whole. So. You guys are already starting to think about it. Michelle, you already uh, emailed me a little bit about what you're thinking about. And Kathleen, you and I talked this evening. Um, so I wanted to give a little bit more structure and guidance for you as you, as soon as you're finished with your digital story, you'll be, um, you'll be uh, working on your final paper project. Um, so one of the things that's really important to do, know is that you're making a final project and you're also creating an Ignite presentation about that final project. So that's important. And I've given you some ideas about whether you might want to do it as a research paper, as a creative project, um, as a curriculum project, or check out option four, the world is your oyster, right? Right? A project that is unclassifiable. But in some ways, this is the important part for tonight for you to think about. There is a little bit of intermediate deliverables to make sure that you work on the project for the whole month of April. As soon as you finish your digital story, you move right into this project. First, by April 12th, I'm going to expect an email that has your your concept. And that's just a short five sentence uh, creative brief. It doesn't uh, commit you in stone to that particular idea, but it shows me you're starting to think about it. The following Friday, I'm going to insist that you will have had a conversation with me. So you have a 30 minute window on, uh, well, this Friday, the 29th, look at that, you can sign up from noon to, uh, to five. Uh, the next week, Wednesday or Friday, I have slots available. So by the 19th, I will have gotten your attention for 30 minutes. <laughs> and we will have had a conversation about your project. The week after that, 
you must complete a scope of work project, which is just a one page document that shows me you're thinking about your purpose, your audience, your, your goals, your strategy, and that it's a small enough project that you can do it by May 10, right? So the criteria for evaluation are worked really broadly because you guys are going to do different things, right? So one thing that's important is that it should relate to something we've explored, right? It should be connectable to some things we've explored. It should allow you to develop one or more of the learning outcomes for this course. And it should be professional, coherent, creative, and complete. Right? So I provided some really great examples here and uh, that should inspire you. There's the Star Wars uh, for middle school or high school readers. There's a, a, a research project data, doing some data analysis of the Summer Institute. If you're a numbers person, you might wanna do some data analysis where you get to produce some charts and graphs or this project on students using cell phones for learning. Amanda and Kara got that article published. So that gives you a sense of that. Do you guys have any questions right away for me on um, your final paper project? Um, the, about the, so if I, if I decide to do a curriculum, so I could do just one unit yep for like one of the courses that i teach so i could do one unit and um provide all the lessons and all the yes. stuff that unit, right yes that would be absolutely a great example of a curriculum project okay other questions that you have about the final paper project so this is a good time for you to incubate ideas remember that process where you just you know don't think about it too much but here's what i'd like you to do for next week week 10 collaboration in context. We're asking this, I think, really interesting question. How do educational, institutional, and social structures shape expression and learning? Because we have to work in contexts, right? And the contexts aren't always that supportive. So first, I'd like you to select one of the LEAP2 projects and tweet some warm feedback. Right, because we are a creative community. Our context is supportive, right? Make sure you use the hashtags so your warm feedback gets across. Uh, sex, we're gonna choose one of these articles to read. It might be conceptualizing identity in youth media arts organizations. It might be voice empowerment and youth produced films about gangs. It might be Review of um, a Pedagogy of Powerful Communication, Youth Radio and Radio Arts in the Multilingual cl Classroom. So after you choose one to read, in my nod to Brian Turnbaugh, I want you to compose a spark page where you use a combination of words and images to communicate key ideas from the readings and your response to them. So Scott and Brian, you guys totally inspired me with your spark page. We'll just see if you can create a page where you use a combination of some quotes from the article and some images to communicate ideas from the readings and your response to them. That should be fun. Uh, okay, so that's the reading. Um, we're gonna just do a little case study of this organization called 826, which is a National Network of Youth Writing and Publishing Centers. So I'd like you to watch the video about it and then um, study the theory of change document. This organization has created a kind of like a model to explain their program and why it works. So study that document and, um, whoops, uh oh, what did I do there? So study that document and then, yikes, oh no, I've completely gotten off the grid here. Just a second. I knew this would happen at 7.55. You just hit the back button and what happened? You go crazy. Um, 
So learn about 826, it's worth uh, just five points, but then after you look at the theory of change model and watch the video, you might wanna to respond to one, answer one of these questions. Which concepts from the theory of change model are most relevant to your work and interest? Which concepts from the theory of change model are evident from what people say in the video or from what's visually shown in the video? And what's missing? from the theory of change model that you would have in your own theory of change model. Ah, so cool. So we're really thinking about how the institutions we work in or the institutions we create can structure our collaboration and creativity. Now this is the most personal project. This is a 10 minute free write. Reflect on an institution or organization that you are familiar with. How does it shape the social practice of collaboration? How does it shape the social practice of student expression and learning? It's just an open Google Doc, and these can be anonymous or uh, pseudo, you can use a pseudonym, right? So you can, um, you can protect, <laughs> you can protect your institution, right? by writing in a anonymized or pseudonymous way. Your digital storytelling project is coming up. And of course, your final paper project is due on May 10th. All right, so, wow, <laughs> what a ride. But here's the cool news. After next week, with this, this topic on creative collaboration in context. Then in April, we kind of step away from reading and doing path right activities. So you get to immerse yourself fully into your final project. So starting next week, we won't be doing path right readings and activities. You'll be working on your final project. And we'll be meeting every week just to coach each other and find out what's going on progress-wise and see how your ideas are evolving. So April becomes a real uh, place of focused work for you on your final project. So that, that's kind of cool, right? Um, so the creative process, we've fertilized it really well. We've nurturized, nurtured it, but now it has to grow. Right? So in the spirit of spring and in the spirit of growing, let's say goodbye to each other with our, the famous goodbye, um, springtime goodbye. Here's how it works. You see how my fingers start to come up and wiggle like grass growing in springtime. All right, so you get your fingers and move them like this. And so on, on the count of three, we're gonna move the grass up and say goodbye at the same time, all right? All right, one, two, three. All right, EDC 534. <laughs> you guys rock. All right, thanks for playing along. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>